Amen. He is risen. Amen. He is risen. Amen. Amen. We want to welcome everyone here this morning. And uh, we have we have the Japanese Grace Church with us. We have uh, YWAM Oasis. We have Bountiful Gospel. And we have the saints, your brothers and sisters, are here this morning to celebrate a wonderful truth. Jesus is alive. Amen. Just want to, uh, just some, some announcements. Uh, the one announcement for our church is uh, Thursday is, is Canmore Bible Study, number six. Yep. And, uh, and that's, that's what's happening this week. And other announcements are more milestones as well as, uh, you're going to find at the back, we've got some new information and help for people. It's called the God Quest series from, from the Bible League. And there's a whole bunch of different topics. This one is why does it matter? Choices in a changing culture. And there's other ones on pain, on grief, on illness, on death. And, and they're all in the back. And uh, they're free, but they did cost about three dollars each. So if you drop a toonie or something in in the offering, would be wonderful, and we'd be able to keep them going and replenish. And I'm telling you about them because we don't want them sitting in the back of the church. And we really want them to be used, and it's just a wonderful series that has just come out from the Bible League. Milestones in the church. For those who have Eric and Kathy on Facebook, because they're in the sunny Philippines, wish them happy anniversary. Carter Herdelman is having a birthday on Tuesday, and you kind of have to wish him happy birthday now, because he'll be in Mexico. <laughs> Not like I'm jealous. <laughs> and, and then Kevin and Christine have an anniversary on Thursday. <laughs> and hmm? oh, it'll be 27 times. <laughs> and then my father-in-law has a birthday on, on the 30th. With all that being said, we want to have a, an, an opening prayer as, as well as just some, some prayer requests that have come in. Um, Brian and Dorothy had, had a little grandson, and uh, he's a couple months premature, so they're, they're asking for, for prayer for Jake, for Amber, and Seth, and, and we want to remember them in prayer, we want to remember others as well. But we want to stand and, and have our opening <coughs> prayer, and so let's, let's do that, let's stand together. Fathers, we, we gather in your name because of the resurrection, because Jesus is alive, because he has ascended and sits at the right hand. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We come to you with great joy and great celebration, and in that joy and celebration, we bring all that we are. And so, Lord, we, we lift our milestones before you, and, and we lift our, our heartfelt needs before you. So, Lord, we think of this little baby in the Vancouver Hospital, and, Lord, we ask your hand to be upon him, to be upon his mom and dad. Lord, we think of other requests, Lord, for paperwork, for, for justice issues. Lord, you're the God of details. He said, if, if, if you know that, that a bird falls from the sky, how much more value? Lord, you delight in us so much. And so, Lord, today we, we put time aside to delight in you. Thank you for your gift in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's remain standing. We're going to turn in our Bibles. It's Isaiah chapter 53. And we're reading the first six verses in Korean and then the following verses in English. So follow along in your Bible. Isaiah chapter, uh, chapter 53. And asking Pastor Philip to come and read.
마치 연한 산과 같이 마른 땅에서 나온 쌈과 같이 자라서 그에게는 고운 모양도 없고 훌륭한 품체도 없으니 우리가 보기에 흠모한 만한 아름다운 모습이 없다. 그는 사람들에게 멸치를 받고 버림을 받고 고통을 많이 겪었다. 그는 언제나 병을 앓고 있었다. 사람들이 그의 얼굴을 돌렸고 그가 멸치를 받으니 우리도 동달아 그를 귀하게 여기지 않았다. 그는 실로 우리가 받아야 할 고통을 대신 받고 우리가 겪어야 할 슬픔을 대신 겪었다. 그러나 우리는 그가 징벌을 받아서 하나님에게 맞으며 고난을 받는다고 생각했다. 그러나 그가 찔린 것은 우리의 허물 때문이고 그가 상처를 받은 것은 우리의 아픔 때문이다. 그가 징계를 받음으로써 우리가 평화를 누리고 그가 매를 맞음으로써 우리의 병이 나았다. 우리는 모두 양처럼 길을 잃고 각기 제 갈길로 흩어졌으나 주님께서 우리 모두의 대학을 그에게 지우셨다. Continuing in verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bore the sin of many. And made intercession for the transgressors. Lord bless this word. You may be seated.
risen Christ our hope. Now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is vain, and your faith is also vain. Yes, and we are found false witness of God, because we have testified of God that He raised up Christ, whom He did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man come death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterwards those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end, when he, delivered, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. For he has put all things under his feet. But when he says, all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. Now, when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. May God bless his word.
should we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died? And he died for all, and those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new.
through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Oh, sorry. That was Second Peter. <laughs> I'd be like, this was very strange. <laughs> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time.
저는 첫날 이른 새벽에 막달라 사람 마리아가 우정에 가서 보니 우정 어기를 막은 물이 이미 묶여져 있었다. 그래서 그 여자는 신문 베드로와 예수께서 사랑하시던 그 다른 제자에게 달려가서 왔습니다. 누가 죽는 우정에서 가져갔습니다. 어디에 넣는지 모르겠습니다. 베드로와 그 다른 제자가 나와서 우정을 넣었다. 둘이 함께 뛰었는데 그 다른 제자가 베드로보다 빨려서 빨리 달려서 먼저 무덤에 이르렀다. 그런데 그는 몸은 굽혀서 한배가 놓여있는 것을 보았으니까 안으로 들어가지는 않았다. 심한 베드로도 그 뒤를 따라왔다. 그가 무덤 안으로 들어가 보니 한배가 놓여있었고 예수의 머리를 같이 싸냈던 수건은 그 상대와 함께 놓여있지 않고 한 곳에 따로 비켜져 있었다. 그제서야 먼저 무덤에 다다른 그 다른 제자도 들어가서 보고 믿었다. 아직도 그들은 예수께서 죽은 사람들 가운데서 반드시 살아, 살아나야 한다는 성경 말씀을 깨닫지 못하였다. 그래서 제자들은 자기들이 있던 곳으로 다시 돌아왔다. In English it reads, Now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early. While it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out with the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen clothes lying there. And the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own home. Entitled, what we're going to talk about just briefly this morning, is that you might The end of this chapter in John 20, verse 31, it says, These things are written that you might believe. When we come back to the, the context of the scripture we read, how much sorrow and humiliation the disciples had gone through. The authorities falsely arrested Jesus, falsely tried him and sentenced him to death. They beat and tortured him, and now this. His body is missing. Hear the words of Mary. They've taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. The first Resurrection Sunday did not start out as a joyous celebration. It was a collection of, of slow individual realizations of an incredible truth. And that incredible truth is this Jesus is alive. Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, and verses 1 to 6, records it this way. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, and they went in, and did not find the body of the Lord. And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee? Uh, 
그들이 안으로 들어가 보니 주 예수의 시신이 없었다. 그래서 그들의 이 일을 어떻게 해야 할지를 몰라서 당황하고 있는데 눈부신 옷을 입은 두 남자가 갑자기 그들 앞에 나왔다. 여자들은 두려워서 얼굴을 아래로 숙이고 있는데 그 남자들이 그들에게 말하였다. 어찌하여 너희들은 살아계신 분은 죽은 자들 가, 사람들 가운데서 찾고 있느냐. 그분은 여기에 계시지 않고 살아나셨다. 갈릴리에 계실 때 너희들에게 하신 말씀을 기억해 보아라. According to Luke, Mary did not go to the tomb alone. 어, 누가 보험에 따르면 마리아는 어, 무덤을 혼자 가지 않았습니다. But she was the first to leave to go get Peter and John. 하지만 그녀는 첫 번째로 나와서 요한과 베드로에게 먼저 향했습니다. The other tomb we discover is Mary and Salome went into the tomb and saw the angel. 어, 나머지 두 사람 마리아와 그 살롬은 어, 무덤으로 들어가서 천사들을 보았습니다. Mark's Gospel adds that these two ladies were so afraid. That they left and did not say anything until, to anyone until much later. 어 마가복음에서는 이렇게 기록되어 있습니다. 그두 여인들이 너무나 겁에 질려서 무덤에 나오고 나서도 아무한테도 말하지 않았다고요. So in John's Gospel, Mary returns followed by John, following John and Peter. 어 요한에서는 그냥 마리아는 다시 어, 무덤으로 돌아왔습니다. 요 요한과 그 베드로와 함께요. And I, I just see this in my mind so vividly. You see, you see John running so fast as a young man, followed by, by Peter who's panting heavily, followed by Mary who's wondering if she even wants to go back. All this confusion tells us one very strong fact. The resurrection of Jesus was not the expected outcome by his disciples. 어 예수님의 부활은 심지어 예, 어 그의 제자들로부터 그런 결과를 어 예상하지 않았습니다. 제자들 또한. They assumed the body stolen. 그저 예수님 시체가 훔쳐졌다고 추측했을 뿐입니다. But we know the body was not stolen. 하지만 우리는 예, 어 시체가 훔쳐 도둑맞지 않았다는 것을 알고 있죠. So the ladies who saw the angels departed terrified. 그래서 그두 여인들은 어, 천사들을 보고 두려움에 떠났습니다. Now John is lingering and he's looking at the linens lying in the tomb. 어 요한은 그냥 가만히 서서 바라보면서 그 선배가 놓여져 있는 것을 보았습니다. If they took the body, why did they unwrap him? 어 그들이 왜 시체를 가져갔다면 왜그 선배를 풀었을까? Peter shows up. I'm sure puffing profusely. I, I relate to Peter. 어 베드로는 어 숨을 헐떡이면서 나타났을 겁니다. 큰목사님 같은 그런 비스커들이. You didn't have to trust. And I love this. It just talks about humanity. John, John. It says John and Peter entered together, but but John said like, well, Peter, you go first. 어 이렇게 이거 인간적으로 이렇게 어 베드로가 요한이 먼저 도착했음에도 불구하고 요한은 그냥 베드로가 먼저 가게끔 열었습니다. So they see the linen that Jesus was wrapped in, and then John adds something else. 어 여기서 무덤에 들어가서 그 선대가 놓아져 있는 것을 보았을 때 요한은 어 다른 것에 집중을 했습니다. John notes a handkerchief that covered his head is neatly folded and placed nearby. 어 예수님을 감쌌던 수건이 그 따로 이렇게 개어 놓아져 있던 것을 요한은 발견했습니다. So the linen is left in a pile, but this handkerchief is neatly folded. 어 선배는 그런 덤이 위에 이렇게 풀려져 있었지만 그 수건은 어 고이 가지런히 접혀져 있던 것을 봤습니다 요한은. You know, one of the gospels makes us focus on the stone and its incredible weight, its location, thrown away from the tomb. 어 어떤 성경 구절은 어 우리는 때때로 그 돌에 집중합니다. 돌이 옮겨져 있고 그것에 얼마만큼 무겁고 위치해 있습니다. Another gospel makes us focus on the grave clothes that they're empty. 어 어떤 다른 복음서에서는 그 수위가 그 무거운 수위들에 대해서도 집중을 합니다. Grave clothes empty, even though they have like 80 pounds of spices wrapped in it. 어그그 선배의 묶여 있는 그런 형식력은 한 40kg 정도 되는 것들요. But John wants us to focus elsewhere. 하지만 요한은 다른 것에 집중하기를 원했습니다. On a neatly folded. Napkin, handkerchief. He saw these things and believed. Oh, 정말 가지런히 개어져 놓여 있는 수건을 보고 그리고 그 요한은 그것을 보고 믿었습니다. So let's consider this napkin, this handkerchief, this hanky. 
그래서 우리는 오늘 그 수건에 대해서 한번 고려를 해봅시다. John in our in our Bible takes an entire verse to tell us that it was neatly folded and set beside the grave clothes. 어, 요한은 성경에서 한 구절을 기록할 정도로 그 가지런히 놓여져 있는 수건 그리고 높여, 어, 따로 놓여져 있는 것에 한번 집중을 아, 쓰, 쓰였습니다. So we look at verse 7 in a handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. 어, 7절 말씀을 보면은 그 선배와 놓여져 있고 놓여져 있지 않고 따로 가지런히 놓여져 있는 수건에 대해서 써져 있습니다. And the first question you have to ask is was it important? Is it really significant? 어, 첫 번째로 우리가 질문해야 될 것은 이것이 그렇게 해서 중요한 것인가? But John took an entire verse to say it was. 어, 하지만 요한은 그한 구절을 다 그것을 기록할 만큼 중요하다고 얘기했습니다. We need to discover a little bit of Hebrew tradition of the time that helps us make sense of this. 어, 이것이 어, 맞는 상황이 왜 요한이 집중해야 되는지 어, 우리는 그 히브리어 그 전통 한번 조금 관련 공부해 볼 필요가 있습니다. Why do I want to do this? 왜 제가 이것을 하고 싶어 할까요? Because John saw it as something important and it was enough for him to believe in the resurrection. 왜냐하면 요한은 이 부활에 대해서 그리고 그 가정에 놓여 있는 수건에 대해서 그만큼 중요하다고 생각을 했기 때문입니다. Now after a nice pancake breakfast, <laughs> thank you to Shalom for cooking. To Ban and Tish and Lorraine and, and Iban for setting up. Why Ram for taking down? The Japanese Grace Church for the fresh fruit. Now we've got all our minds in culinary. In the culinary tradition of that time, servants would wait out of sight until the household had finished eating. 어 종들은 그 집의 주인이 식사가 끝날 때까지 그 밖에서 기다렸습니다. And they were not allowed to touch anything until something happened. 어 그리고 어떠한 행동이 있을 적 있을 있기 전까지 그것을 어떤 것도 만질 수 없었습니다. The master would take his napkin. 네그 주인은 그 And that would mean he's done. <laughs> but if for some reason the meal was interrupted, the master would do this. He would neatly fold his napkin and place it down and leave. 그리고 만약에 식사가 끝나지 않았다면 그 주인은 이렇게 볼이 접어서 볼이 접어서 그 접시 옆에 놓았을 것입니다. He'd leave it beside the plate as a sign he would be coming back soon to finish the meal. 어 접시 옆에 놓았다는 그런 신호는 다시 돌아와서 식사를 끝내겠다는 의미입니다. And it was a sign for the servants to touch nothing. 어 그것은 신호였습니다. 종들이 만지지 말라는 것이죠. Now we, we have many nations here and, and not all of us eat with a knife and fork and, and chopsticks and some of us might not even have other traditions here too. But in, in, in a, a uh, let's go British or French tradition to be safe. Because Herbert, I, I'm not sure if this applies to Germany or not. When, when you're not done with your meal, you, you cross your cutlery like this. When you're done with your meal, you take your cutlery and put it to the side. Now, what do you do with chopsticks? Is there a way to do that? No, you don't get up unless you're done. <laughs> Is there something possible? Okay. Okay, so it's just a sign, hey, I'm not quite finished. So, so we understand that. We, we have this tradition in different ways even today. Uh, 
Jesus was telling those who saw the linen that Jesus was coming back shortly. John's Gospel says John saw this and believed. Even though he didn't have all the facts about the resurrection, he still had to learn all the Old Testament prophecies. It says, yet he believed. Jesus was not finished. And John would soon see Jesus. John did not know what would happen next, but he believed Jesus was not finished. And yet we can go to the very next story in verses 11 through 15. Mary doubted and waited. And in her doubt, she saw the gardener and she said, Where have they taken him? And she discovered the gardener was actually Jesus. She didn't believe, even though the stone was rolled away. She didn't believe because of the linen great clothes lying in a heap. She didn't believe the folded napkin. But she believed when she saw Jesus. Even today, followers of Jesus must decide for themselves. You must decide for yourself what happened that first Resurrection Sunday. You must decide for yourself. Jesus has not finished the work. Will you believe? Will you wait? Because Jesus told his disciples he's coming back. This Resurrection Sunday, as we celebrate, as we do around the world, what will you do with Jesus? What will you do with the resurrection? And more importantly, what will you do as you wait? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to celebrate with my brothers and sisters. Lord, thank you for the power of the truth of the resurrection as I look around this room. And Lord, I, I see many, many nations and languages and cultures represented. Lord, I see different continents here because of something that happened on that first resurrection Sunday. Jesus, you are alive. And that good news transcends, transcends our differences, transcends our languages, transcends our cultures, it speaks to our deepest need. Jesus, you died for our sins, and you are resurrected as the first fruit among many. And Lord, we will live for you as we wait for your return. Holy Spirit, give us the power we need to live each day in witness of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand, and we're going to sing another beautiful song as we close.